the future. Everyone wants to see it, and why not? It has robots, flying cars, and of course, superheroes. Yeah, the future still has those, but they're even cooler because of all the sweet gadgets. Like Terry McGinnis, the Batman Beyond. And Miguel O'Hara, the Spider-Man from 2099. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Terry McGinnis was your average futuristic high school student. He went to future raves, complained about future problems, had a future girlfriend, yeah, you know, the usual. Until one fateful day when Terry got into a fight with a group of jokers. What you got against comedians? No, no, a gang called the Jokers. Y you know, like, the Joker? Ah, but with a Z, cause it's the future. Well, naturally. After possibly the most dangerous motorcycle chase ever put on television. Yeah, it's cool, he's got a helmet. Terry found himself inside an isolated mansion owned by an elderly billionaire named Bruce Wayne. Here, he stumbled upon the most important revelation in his life. Bruce Wayne is Batman! Oh, what a surprise! Well, more like he was Batman. He'd retired from crime fighting years ago, cause, you know, age is a bitch. Wait a minute, after decades of secrecy, a punk teenager just happens to stumble into the Batcave? For crying out loud, if he'd found my secret lair, he'd have been vaporized on the spot. Yeah! Anyway, Terry's roller coaster of a day still wasn't over. Turns out, his dad got murdered. Dad? Bummer. So he did what any emotionally charged teen who wants to avenge their dad would do. He stole the bat suit. But not the old cape and cowl of yesteryear. This was the latest and most advanced bat suit. Terry McInnes didn't just become the all new Batman, he was Batman Beyond. You ever wonder what would happen if Batman got a hold of an Iron Man suit? It's basically that, and damn, he looks friggin' red. The Batsuit's nanotechnology greatly enhances his strength and provides several thin yet strong layers of ballistic and environmental protection. And he can fly! He can soar faster than a speeding future car, and he's really nimble in the air. Plus, he can always give his punches and kicks a literal rocket boost. The suit sports over two dozen other gadgets for combat and espionage. He has a wrist-mounted grappling hook that can extend over 50 feet. There's a cloaking device, a lock decoder, finger microphones, climbing claws, an underwater breather, thermal and binocular vision, extendable spikes on his arms, flashbang grenades, triple-weighted bolas, a buzzsaw, and even retractable tweezers. Splinters are no laughing matter. And don't forget all those sweet, sweet batarangs. These new age ninja stars are even sharper and more compact than before, and they come in a variety of delightful flavors, like explosive, ensnaring, and electrifying. Terry's got a solid throwing arm and can even disarm multiple opponents with a single shot. But if he's feeling a bit lazy, he can always just use his arm launchers to fire battering discs. Also, when anyone gets in too close, the whole suit can act like a man-sized taser. The electric shock is strong enough to stun people spliced with animal DNA and short out heavy machinery. But the tools don't make the man, er, Batman. Terry's a master martial artist with plenty of training from legends like former Robin Dick Grayson, totally real ninja Kyrie Tanaga, and the former Dark Knight himself. Well, once he got over the kid stealing his suit, of course. Bruce Wayne doesn't just serve as Terry's mentor, he's also a constant source of advice and information on the go through his direct link to the Batsuit from the Batcave. Good thing, too, since Terry's not exactly the world's greatest detective. At least not compared to the old man. Bruce is extremely intelligent and an expert analyst. Plus, the Batcave has some very impressive technology. Not only does it host one of the most powerful supercomputers on the planet, it's also completely dependent on its own hydroelectric power supply and isolated network. Still, I don't care who Bruce used to be, having an old guy barking orders in your ears sounds annoying. Like your dad's always looking over your shoulder. Or at least I imagine, cuz I didn't have one. Well, Terry is Bruce Wayne's secret son. <laughs> what? In an effort to ensure there would always be a Batman, government boogeywoman Amanda Waller had secretly overwritten Warren McGinnis' reproductive DNA with that of Bruce Wayne's. So like, he was just blessed in Wayne babies? It's like all the fun, but you could get out of any child support case. And bonus, I guess Terry's father technically wasn't murdered. Good for him. Also, he's got all the benefits from Bruce's kick-ass genes. Even before going through combat training, Terry was a skilled fighter. 
strong enough to send opponents flying with a single punch. In the suit, he's strong enough to lift large I-beams and this giant boulder. He's even survived getting his leg trapped under Bruce Wayne's trophy penny. What's so special about a penny? Just look at it. Holy colossal currency, Batman! The penny's diameter is easily 20 feet wide and is frequently dated from the 1940s. This means the penny is likely composed of bronze and weighs around 166 tons. That's more than enough to crush all the bones in your foot. But not Terry. He was up and at him like nothing happened. I mean, this guy's tough enough to take a missile to the face and then fall hundreds of stories. And all he got out of it was a couple broken ribs. What's a penny as heavy as 33 monster trucks gonna do? He's quick enough to dodge gunfire, skilled enough to defeat lizard people and the Justice Lords. In a newer suit, he could fire concussive pulse blasts and even outraced an intercontinental missile, which can reach speeds of up to 15,000 miles per hour. That's over 19 times the speed of sound. He's still no Bruce Wayne, though. He's kind of a punk and doesn't have the amazing smarts or expertise of Batman Classic. You don't quite have his magnificent brain, for instance. You do have his heart, though. Maybe not, but he has accomplished feats equal to his predecessor, like fighting Superman and ending the Joker threat once and for all. Clearly, Terry McGinnis has more than earned the title of Batman. You're pretty strong for some clown who thinks he's Batman. I am Batman. <laughs> <laughs> So, here's an unfortunate spoiler, the year 2099 kinda sucks. Plagued by a massive civil war between humans and mutants, the world fell into a dystopian ruin of violence and anarchy. The heroic age had come to an end. But some people still wanted a sequel. Enter Miguel O'Hara, a child prodigy turned super genius with a penchant for genetic tinkering. Miguel's skills landed him a job at one of the biggest companies in the world, Alchemax, where he got to work trying to rebuild one of the greatest heroes of all time, Spider-Man. Specifically, he attempted to replicate the DNA of Peter Parker, the original Spider-Man. But like most of the 21st century superheroes, not much remained of Parker outside of stories and legend. Miguel had to build his experiment from scratch, starting with a single, simple spider. Unfortunately, Alchemax didn't have the greatest job security. After a lot of bad blood and some spilled blood, Miguel wound up accidentally getting a dose of his own creepy crawly project, transforming him into the Spider-Man of 2099. But future Spider-Man isn't quite the same as your grandpappy's Spidey. That's right, apart from the superhuman strength, speed, durability, and improved healing, Miguel's powers are entirely different. Unlike Parker, he can't actually stick to any surface. He can still wall crawl, though, using retractable talons on his fingers and toes, which also make for fairly deadly weapons in a fight. And he's got fangs like a vampire! If he bites you, he can inject a venom that can paralyze your whole body almost instantly. Also, he may not have Petey's trusty spider sense, but his sense of sight, smell, and hearing are superfied. He can hear noises from miles away, see in the dark, and make out far off and fast moving objects with ease. In fact, his senses are so acute, he wears tinted glasses to keep daylight from hurting his eyes. And like any Spider-Man, he can shoot webs from his hands. Miguel doesn't need compact web shooter devices on his wrists. He actually has organic spinnerets in his arms, which create and release thick, durable strings of webbing. Because they're natural, these strings are chemically identical to spider silk, with a tensile strength similar to steel. Ew! Okay, the original Spider-Man always kinda grossed me out, but this guy's powers are disgusting. I think Miguel would agree with you. Well, yeah, one day he's just your average dweeb doing sciencey stuff like you, and the next he's got big lumps in his arms which shoot sticky stuff? Who wouldn't be weirded out? Miguel saw his newfound power as a curse, a blight which turned him into an inhuman freak of nature. But that didn't stop him from fighting crime, complete with his own Spidey suit. His original costume was made from unstable molecules, allowing the use of his talons without tearing the fabric. He also wears a web-like cape made of light bite, which lets him glide through the air. Whoa, light bright! I remember that! Man, do they still have that in the future? And did they find a way to stop you losing those little pegs? Light bite. Yeah, whatever. The suit looks pretty cool, so I hate to spoil the mood, but it's actually just a run-of-the-mill costume from a Day of the Dead festival. No, really. Though after meeting the present-day Peter Parker, Miguel received a much-needed upgrade. His new suit contained synthesized unstable molecule fabric mixed with Kevlar, 
greatly improving his defense. This suit can survive a shot from a howitzer artillery cannon. A common M777 military howitzer fires 92-pound shells at 2,200 feet per second. That hits with over 100 tons of force. Miguel's even taken a hit from the thing, a hit which shattered a tempered glass window and sent Miguel flying over two dozen feet. And the new suit has explosives, hologram projectors, infrared scanning, and it's even got wings and rocket boosters on the feet. Wait, that sounds familiar. Miguel may be a genius, but he's at his best when he's working with his holographic assistant, Lila or the Y-rate lifeform approximation. She's basically like the future Alexa with a bunch of extra features. She keeps track of Miguel's life signs and surroundings. With Lila's scanners and his super senses, anyone would have a hard time trying to sneak up on future Spidey. While Lila was originally built as a home appliance, she can be stored on Miguel's portable communicator. She can act as an onboard lie detector and do advanced calculations to the 20th decimal in a millisecond, which is flippin' amazing. Fun fact, Lila's appearance was based on Marilyn Monroe. Arrarr. Not that anybody in 2099 seems to know who Marilyn Monroe was. Okay, seriously, how did they lose so much information in less than 100 years? Remember, kids, always back up your files. It'll prevent the apocalypse. Well, lucky for them, Miguel got over his emo phase and started setting the future back on track. And he had the skills to do it. He's quick enough to dodge gunfire, tough enough to take a shotgun blast to the chest, resilient enough to tank electric shocks, and strong enough to rip a 20-ton turret off a tank. More than that, he helped another Spider-Man keep this giant building piece in place. What even is that? Likely some sort of antenna, but it also resembles the mooring mast atop the Empire State Building. Back when everybody thought zeppelins were the hot new thing, because who doesn't like riding a giant flammable balloon full of explosive gas? Sign me up! Assuming it's composed of steel, and roughly estimating its size compared to the Spider-Man on the roof, then comparing the Empire State Building's mooring mast, this should weigh, at most, 200 tons. So basically, McGill's a badass, and he proved it in the most epic way possible. After rebuilding the world with Captain America, Miguel inherited the most legendary weapon of them all, Mjolnir. Although Thor's hammer didn't actually grant him its warrior powers, Miguel didn't use it as a weapon, but as proof of his authority, a literal symbol of the societal weight he alone could carry. With his dominance asserted, Miguel created the utopian future a person could only dream of. And you thought Peter Parker was cool. This Spider-Man is at the top. Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man of the year 2099. That's me, ready to save the universe and looking good while doing it. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, the future is now in the form of Blue Apron. Grandpappy Boomstick always said that nothing in life is better than good food and making something with your own two hands. And Blue Apron is both those things combined. Blue Apron is the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. All ingredients arrive right to your door, guaranteed fresh and ready to cook. It's better than eating fast food, plus it's affordable. Blue Apron is less than $10 per person per meal. Choose from a variety of recipes and get the meals that sound good to you. The ingredients are perfectly proportioned and the instructions are easy to follow. I mean, even Boomstick can do it. Hey, watch it or you're not getting any of the next meal I make when it arrives. Well then, I'll make the crispy wild Alaskan pollock and garlic mashed potatoes with roasted broccoli and tartar sauce myself. And if you're worried about variety, don't bother. Recipes are not repeated within the year, so you'll never get bored. Check out this week's menu and get $30 off your first order with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash battle. You'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron, so don't wait! That's blueapron.com slash battle. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. But right now, it's time for a death battle! McGinnis, keep an eye out. I've been seeing some odd reports regarding this part of the city. Hey, Bozo! I was brooding there! Who the shock are you? Right 
Right back at you, fatty! <laughs> hey, Lila, get me a reading on this vampire guy, yeah? Of course, Miguel. I can't identify his tech or fighting style. But I can try hacking his suit. He's too comfortable in the air. Try a different approach. Get to ground level. I can't move! Damn, that hurt. Something's trying to hack your suit. Our new friend, no doubt. How's the hack going? Nowhere fast. Get in close and finish this quick. No problem. Can my fangs pierce his suit? I think so. Then I'll finish this myself. Lila! Lila! And problem solved. I guess that's one way to do it. K.O. Oh, I'll never get tired of seeing people blow up. It's always such a blast. Thanks to Bruce's counsel, Terry uses Flashbang to take advantage of Miguel's sensitive eyesight, and his electric shock that can short out large machinery to deal with Lila. Yeah, unlike Bruce, the poor girl wasn't really built for combat. And while her hacking skills were top notch, the isolated Batcave had the defenses to hold her off. Even still, Terry's stats edged out Miguel's in more ways than one. When it came to maneuverability and durability, they were mostly even. Both could dodge bullets and weave through the air. Both could survive heavy ballistic hits. But unlike Terry, Miguel's never outraced anything faster than a Mach 19 ballistic missile. For physical strength, Terry had him beat too. Recall that boulder that he lifted underwater. This took place in Superman's Fortress of Solitude near the Arctic, so the boulder was likely composed of sedimentary dark limestone, the most common rock type around that location. So we compared Terry's height to the boulder, applied the density for limestone, and subtracted the weight reduced by underwater buoyancy to find the boulder's weight to be 192 tons. And he tossed it aside like it was nothing. Terry's peak strength in the bat suit has to be more than 200 tons. Assuming Miguel applied his fair share when holding up that antenna, his best strength feat we know of is at max 100 tons. But he's a Spider-Man! Spider-Man can lift more than that, right? Not usually. Technically, Miguel's powers are so different from Peter's that we shouldn't really scale him to other Spider-Men. But for the benefit of the doubt, let's do it anyway. We'll check out two of Spider-Man's most impressive strength feats. The first is the time he braced a private jet while it was landing. Look at him! He's literally the landing gear! According to Spider-Man himself, the plane's total weight was at most 115,000 pounds. Adding the thrust from a Whittle W1 engine, which this small jet is most likely to have an engine comparable to, this feat comes out to 58 tons. Not even close to Terry's 200. Then there was this one time where Spidey had to push way past his limits to lift what he offhandedly compared to as a locomotive. Since he could measure the plane, it's likely he's accurate here, but given the time period, that's still only 130 tons at most. It's clear Terry had a pretty sizable physical advantage. And just because Terry's mind wasn't as fine-tuned as the original Batman's didn't mean he's dumb. Even more, Miguel never trained like Terry did. Hell, he never really had much formal training at all. But Terry was trained by ninjas, stealth artists, and other crime fighters to be a master in the battlefield. And since Miguel didn't have a spider sense, Terry just had to wait until the untrained future Spidey left an opening. In short, while Miguel wasn't completely outmatched, Terry's superior strength counseling, equipment, and training won the bout. Turns out this Batman was beyond him. The winner is Batman Beyond. Stick around, we're about to announce the combatants for the next death battle. And if you want to watch exclusive commentary on this episode, click that little box over there and start a first membership trial. Should try to grab one of these shirts too.